Hi everyone, and welcome to our video where we delve into the five things important to avoid while engaging in intermittent fasting. Despite its popularity, many individuals falter, leading to ineffective outcomes or even counterproductive effects such as weakness, fatigue, which can negatively impact your health. Okay, well the first thing is that what's called a five and two, where five days of the week, you're doing whatever you want, eating whatever, and the two days, you're doing a low calorie diet, like 500 calories, maybe on a Saturday or Sunday, right? And you go back to your regular meals five days a week. That's not beneficial because it never gives your body a chance to adapt. It's not consistent enough to really see the changes. And plus, when you're doing 500 calories, those calories are gonna block your fasting. So the amount of time that you're fasting within this is actually very, very small. And it's a bit painful because you're never fully a keto adapt. You never really get into it where it's comfortable. You're going to be hungry. You're going to have symptoms. So I do not like this at all. The next thing not to do is consuming branch amino acids or collagen when you're in the fasting state. Why? Because this will knock you out of ketosis because it's there. Both of these are proteins. Also, one side note is these are partial amino acids. It's not a mixture with all the amino acids. Next one is omitting salt and electrolytes. When you consume salt and electrolytes, there's no calories there. They're just basically minerals. And it's very, very important to do this because a lot of people have a pre-existing subclinical nutritional and nutrient deficiencies going into this. And so everything is magnified. So the last thing we want is you having you faint and feeling dizzy and even passing out, okay? So your body and your heart especially needs electrolytes, potassium, sodium, things like that. And salt also will prevent weakness, fatigue, especially of the muscles. If you're doing prolonged fasting, let's say 72 hours, and you have this huge meal, okay? When you're done with it, that can create some problems because your body doesn't have the enzymes built up. It's been so used to fasting, and then you're gonna shock the system with all these calories and all this nutrition. Not a good idea. So do like a small meal, make sure it's healthy, and then wait a little bit if you want and then have the next meal a little bit later. But you don't wanna do a humongous meal. Now, maybe you wanna do this if you're at one meal a day, but not when you're going like two or three or four day type of fasting. Okay, number five, omitting keto. So there are people I know that are doing intermittent fasting, but then when they eat, they eat pretty much whatever they want and it's not really good foods. What's the point of getting these incredible benefits from intermittent fasting by lowering insulin when you're just putting in garbage back in the body. So you wanna combine healthy ketone with an amino fasting. You don't wanna keep them separate. While intermittent fasting is often associated with weight loss, its primary goal is to enhance your overall health. Arm yourself with a thorough understanding of this method to sidestep common pitfalls. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to guiding you further in our next video on intermittent fasting. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video to spread the word.